All right, thanks for joining me uh, on Chaos of Clarity. It was a week ago. We talked about the possibilities that, uh, that we would have a hurricane. Well, those possibilities have been realized. Now, did I think this was going to a Category 4 or 5? No, I did not. Did I think it was going to a major hurricane? Thought certainly that was the possibility. But it is what it is, and right now it is a major hurricane. Take a look at the uh, satellite, uh, and, and there it is. I mean, you can clearly see. Look at the eye starting to pop in here uh, as well. Let me play this. There it goes. Look at the eye popping in here right now on the infrared satellite picture. You see that on an infrared. You have a major hurt. Now, listen, this is bordering on Category 5 as we speak. Now, what happened? It's in the perfect location. Uh, very warm water. Let me show you this, and we talked about this last week as well, the wind shear. Look where this is tucked in. See this area? Light wind shear. This is why I was convinced if it would stay south and it <laughs> excuse me, and it would consolidate into one piece that this would become a hurricane. And here's why. This is exactly what the guidance was showing, that there'd be this pocket of lower wind shear. Also, guidance did a good job showing there wouldn't be any dry air in the center of circulation, that the dry air would be off to the north. And that's what you're looking at here, right in here. You can see all the dry air here. Now, this has been moving east-southeast. This is going to start coming around now. The question is, is there any dry air in the Yucatan Peninsula that gets involved in this storm? We'll see. I do believe that this storm will peak intensity here in the next 24 hours, tonight and tomorrow. I am not expecting this system to hold its wind intensity as it approaches Florida. Now, it is very important. I want to make this distinction. It does not matter. This is going to be a devastating hurricane for Florida, specifically the storm surge, depending on where this comes in, because this is going to take a track that is very unique to Florida. That is a track that goes from east to from west to east into the Florida Peninsula. There are a couple of storms that I remember that are somewhat similar. Don't forget you had Wilma. Remember Wilma? Let me turn on. Let me turn on the uh, full screen. Remember Wilma came in. If I'm remembering, it was a Category Five in here. It came in here, stalled around Cancun, uh, weakened, and then strengthened, and it hit South Florida. That was the closest track that I remember. Of course, there were Charlies that came up like this and went and, and took a right turn. And of course, you had Ian that came like this and went into here. But you didn't. I can't find a storm. Certainly in October. Earlier since uh, the, the only storms that I did see uh, back in the 1800s and, and, and as, as early as 1900, that's it, that took a track like this toward the Florida Peninsula. And you had numerous tracks that went like this. There's only four or five storms. And the latest one was 1900. So the track that's coming into Florida has not been seen since the 1800s or around 1900 along the west coast of Florida. This is a very unique track. And because it's taking this track, right, on the southern side of this, it is going to produce an unbelievable life-threatening and land-altering storm surge south of this track because of the long-fetched and duration of this storm surge, which is going to be longer because of the track. I have a graphic showing that coming up. So that's the concern as we move forward here. And I want to show you uh, the eye path, and then I want to get into the possibilities. So if you look at our eye path, we're right near Tampa Bay, right near Tampa for the, or Tampa Bay area with the, with the uh, landfall. But I could see it as far as this north. I could see it as far north as Cedar Key, and I could see it as far south as around the Naples area. That's the possibilities along with any of these in between. I'm sorry, but we're still 40, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, a little over 60 hours from landfall. Where this make landfall is going to going to matter tremendously because on the southern side of this landfall, you're going to get that devastating storm surge. And if this goes just north of Tampa, that would devastate the Tampa Bay community. Devastated, I'm afraid. There would be a, 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 a unfathomable damage with that storm surge if it goes just north of Tampa. If it goes south towards Sarasota, uh, uh, Sarasota Key, uh, Siesta Key, Sarasota, Bradenton, then it's the Fort Myers Beach toward Naples that would get the storm surge. Up here in the Panhandle, or let's say in the Big Bend area, you get the wind and the rain, but the storm surge is off to your south. If this goes up towards Cedar Key, then it's just south 
that you get the storm surge. You see what I mean? So and that's what we're going to concentrate on. And by the way, you're going to get a damaging storm surge on the northern side of the storm along the east coast of Florida. Right now, I'd say anywhere between Melbourne and Jacksonville, you have to worry about. Now, it's not going to be the same storm surge as you're going to get in, in west southwest Florida or west coast of Florida. But it's going to be a bad one. Either way, so that's what we're dealing with. Where exactly is this making landfall? Now, what I want to do is, like I always do, let's show some modeling so you get a chance, get an idea about uh, what the possibilities are here. Let Let's go. Uh, well, first of all, let me show you why this uh, strengthened. All right, let me show you that here quickly because what you're looking at right now is that this system. What is it under? This is the 200 millibars right? This is uh, 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 200, 200 millibars. Let me put this on full so you can see it a little better here. Okay. So this system is down in here and it's underneath this 200 millibar high pressure, no wind shear. And it's going to continue to go through this area. This is this morning. Let me play this out as we get into Tuesday. And you can see this upper high shifting as we get into Wednesday evening. Here it is in the Yucatan Strait. So it's still in a good good location for development. That's why it should maintain its strength or even get even a little stronger. It won't be much stronger, but it's already very strong. And then as we get into Tuesday, that upper high does start to leave. See, you start getting it over Cuba, and then it's in this zone lifting to the north. Now, there is some wind shear here. But it is going parallel to the to the storm, right? So it's not going to be as detrimental. But that's when I think you're going to start getting a, a a loss of wind intensity tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, because the upper high, which is ventilating it, right, is moving east. You see that? And as we get toward Tuesday, uh, 8 a.m., uh, 8 p.m., your upper high is over here. You're in the, we're in this west-southwest flow. Now it's going parallel to the storm, so it's not as detrimental. But, I mean, you're talking about Category 4 or Category 5. It's hard to keep that intensity unless you have near-perfect conditions. And I don't think they're perfect. You do have a lot of warm water. Maybe that'll counteract that. But that's why I don't think we're going to see any more intensity. And then as you go forward here, just looking to 200 millibar, here we are Wednesday morning. The upper high is way over here now. You, you have a, a dip in the jet stream here. You're getting southwesterly flow. So, again, you're parallel to it but it's not as pristine. So that's why this should lose wind intensity. However, be, because of how strong it is and the wave action that's just going to be sent to Florida, I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot as far as the storm surge. It's going to be devastating. But what does matter quite a bit, and you hear this a lot, don't focus on, don't for, focus on the exact point. And while that is right right now, in the next 24 hours, we're absolutely going to have to focus on that because on the southern side of this storm, of Milton, there's going to be in like a 10 to 15 foot storm surge or 10 to 16 feet or even higher with a long duration storm surge that will cause a lot of devastation, I'm afraid, just south of where that storm goes. I'll show you the storm surge forecast. So let me, I want, I want to take you to another map here and I, I want to talk about where we think this is is going here and again i want to show you the modeling so you have an idea i want you to see what i'm looking at here so i'm going to take this in the full this is the american this is the american model and of course what you're looking at this is melting down here this is uh two uh, uh two o'clock this afternoon let me take you to tomorrow morning now here's the key let me take you to tomorrow evening Here's the key. You've got a piece of energy here. There are two steering things. You've got this trough, and then you have this trough. What's the more dominant trough? It's pretty simple. If this is the more dominant trough, you're going to get more of a west-northwest steering flow, and this goes farther south. I'll show you the graphic. If this is the dominant trough, you get more of a west-southwesterly steering flow, and you take the storm farther north. That's really the difference. It is interesting, though. As we go forward, I want you to show. I want to show you the different modeling: the American model, the European model. American, European, very simple. American, European. GFS European, GFS European. American is GFS. The uh, the European is the uh, Euro. Uh, GFS Euro. Okay. Wednesday morning. There's the American GFS. There's the Euro. Pretty much same spot. A little slower. GFS a little stronger. Eight o'clock. This is where things get eerie 
here. This is the American model. This is the European model. European a little slower, but it takes it in the exact same spot, just north of Tampa. That's the American. That's the American. There's the European. This track that would take this in the here, just north of Tampa, is the absolute worst case scenario for Tampa. Worst case scenario. Because you would pile that water up into the bay and that would do a tremendous amount of damage. Tremendous amount of damage. And it's a long duration uh, storm surge. That's the other problem. It'll start Tuesday night and will continue through Wednesday. I mean, this would cause untold amount of damage, this storm surge. All right, so that the, those are the modeling. That's what the modeling is saying now. Let me show you. I, I have a simple graphic that I think explains this uh, pretty well. And let me let me show you that graphic here pretty quick about how this is going to work. I made this so you know everybody gets un, understands what I'm talking about here. So this is the scenarios here. Let me take this off. There. Okay. So you've got those two troughs, the northern piece and the southern jet. Now. These help determine where Milton is going to go. And simply, it's this. If, if you have the northern trough, that's stronger. That's the one coming across the east. What that will do is produce more of a west uh, northwest steering flow, and this would take this in toward the Naples-Fort Myers area. But if this is not the stronger one, let's say this is a little weaker, and then you've got this uh, this second trough coming in, why did it do that? Let me go back to where I was here. Sorry about that. A uh, uh, little graphic snafu on my part. So, okay, let's go back to this graphic right here. So again, there's the northern. Let me show you the southern one. So if the southern one is stronger, that creates more of a west-southwest steering flow, and that then takes this toward the Cedar Key area. So that's why we have the range of possibilities, and right now we're in between, because what may happen is maybe these are of equal strength, and that would take it toward Tampa. So there are many possibilities, but I want you to understand when you look, when you look at our iPath, why we're forecasting what we're forecasting here. And there it is. We're taking this right near Tampa, maybe just off to the south. All right. Now, in this scenario, the devastating storm surge would probably go all the way down toward Naples. If you would be north of Tampa, boy, you'd get some rain and wind, but the devastating storm surge is off to your south. If this takes a track north of Tampa, that is the absolute worst case scenario for the Tampa, St. Petersburg area. Fort Myers, you'd get a formidable storm surge as well. Not as bad as it could be, but very bad. So that's why we've got to zone in on this track. Now, if this track would go more like this, toward the Naples area, then this whole area from Fort Myers on north is spared the worst of the storm surge. You're still going to get a storm surge here out ahead of this storm well in advance still, but it's not going to be as bad. All right. So that's why the track absolutely matters. And we're going to have to zone in on that here. want to show you this. This is the 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 lives to the lives to property. It's along the south, anywhere from Corp Coral, Cape Coral, toward Tampa area. But again, this can adjust farther south and north depending on where this comes in. If it's farther north, the track, we take it farther north. If it's farther south, it's farther south. But this is our right now. This is what we are predicting till we get a better handle on this. I want to show you the winds. There's the strong winds that we're looking at here. So you can 40 to 60, 60 to 80, 80 to 100, 100 to 120, and there's your 120 to 140. And this is along the I-4 corridor, a very populated area. This would bring massive amounts of power outages here to Florida, especially the I-4 corridor. I want to show you that storm surge. And listen, you're going to get a damaging storm surge along the east coast of Florida, north of where this storm comes in. So we even have three to six feet here. This would cause damage. It's not as catastrophic as what you're seeing in southwest Florida, but it's plenty bad enough. And here's the problem. Because of this storm coming in from the due west, you get a prolonged period of storm surge beginning Tuesday night out of the west-southwest. And then as that storm, Milton, continues to move in, you still have it right in the Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening out of the west-southwest. And then guess what? 
as we get in the late Wednesday night, Thursday morning, as it takes a track this way, you turn the winds right out of the west-northwest, and you get the damaging storm surge this way. So that's going to cause problems, I'm afraid. I'll leave you with this. This can change, but we have 15 to 20 feet just south of this storm. This could be up here. This could be down here. But we have a life-threatening, very damaging storm surge anywhere above 10 feet. 6 to 10 feet will cause life-threatening conditions. So we have a life-threatening storm surge a large, across a large part of the west coast of Florida. I wish the news was not as dire, but it is. <sighs> Make sure you stay tuned to AccuWeather.com, the AccuWeather Network, and you can follow me on Twitter, on uh, for X, uh, formerly Twitter. I'm at AccuRainar. We'll get through this storm.